Imagine a life of total isolation. No newspapers, no TV, no contact with the outside world, and just an hour or two of conversation a day. Fourteen Auckland women have chosen just such a life. They are the Sisters of Carmel, a community of Catholic nuns who have cut their ties to the world and given their lives to God. To the outside world, it's a harsh life, one that attracts few newcomers. The average age of the Auckland order is around 60, and the last recruit who stayed entered 14 years ago. But for the Sisters of Carmel, some who've lived this way for 50 years, it is perfection. Tonight, the sisters break their silence, show us a world that no one but them has seen. A weekly ritual of darkness and light, starkness and beauty. This prayer to the Virgin Mary has never before been seen or heard outside these walls. We thought it was our opportunity to give our witness to the fact that there's more in life than just pleasure and possessions and power that uh, there is a God and that there are people who have been prepared to give the whole of their lives to his service through prayer. The lives of the Carmelite nuns have for 60 years been tucked behind the walls of this central Auckland villa. Lives enclosed by bars, locks and high fences, not so much to keep the nuns in but the world out. So precious is their privacy, no one is permitted to go inside. Friends, family, visiting clergy, no one goes beyond these bars. Which is why it's so remarkable the Carmelite nuns have allowed our cameras into their lives. Good morning. Good morning, Janet. Do you want to come in now? Yes, thank you. Good. Sister Mary of Carmel has spent 46 years here, nine as prioress. Thank you. On this side, bare wooden floors, unaccustomed to heels. Unadorned walls and the chill air of poverty. Here, material comforts would only clutter the mind, distract from the purpose of the Carmelite life. This is the essence of their lives, the thing around which everything revolves. Formal prayer, seven times a day, every day of their lives. We pray for every person on the face of the earth. It's really the reason we're here. So it's the main thing that we are, and it just doesn't mean that we're always saying prayers, but that we're always, you might say, in the presence of God. What kinds of things do you pray for? Family troubles, financial matters, sickness, every kind of problem works, examinations, anything. So what does it mean if your prayer fails, if it doesn't achieve the result? Well, what we say is this. The prayer is always answered, but the answer may be no, because God knows best. Up every day at 5 a.m., their lives are dictated by rules and tradition. They dress in the habit that's been worn by the Carmelites for four centuries. They do not speak, not even a good morning. That too is a distraction from God. There is industry though. The Carmelites make a small living for themselves, baking altar hosts for the Auckland Diocese. 
how important is the temperature there, Sister? It's very important because if it's too warm, uh, they will stick together, and too wet, the same. And if it's too cold, they will be um, they won't be right for cutting because they will uh, break. Have you had a few failures? Oh, many. <laughs> Fortunately, we have to learn by experience. The work is simple, monotonous, and perfect for nuns who want to leave their minds free. There's a joy in everything, really. You don't go seeking after the joy. The joy comes and it's, it bubbles up out of it um, without having to search for the joy. Do you really find joy in doing this? Yes, but it's a simple, homely joy. And I think, um, ultimately, it's the simple joys that are the nicest in life. So totally self-reliant you are good boy except for two guard dogs charged with deterring intruders most other jobs the sisters tackle themselves so sister uh, sister jane sister jane yes you're the main mower are you well i we several of us take turns but uh, i do quite a bit oh, you do enjoy mowing yes i do yes. sort of find it very relaxing are you able to think of God as you're doing this? Uh, yes, I do. Perhaps not so much on this one because you have to concentrate a good bit, you know, with the, um, you don't sort of run into anything. Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm, I'm always ask, asking his help because uh, I need it. A lot of women take for granted the love of a man. Is that something that you think about? Yes, I do think of it and uh, I admit that. But the Lord, I believe, has um, provided for that in a deeper way than I could have had in a relationship with a man. Sister Arsalika left her home in Fiji 14 years ago to join the Sisters of Carmel. She is 34. Do you sometimes feel that you're in a difficult position because you're the youngest? Yes, I feel it is difficult at times and I feel quite frustrated at times and other times I feel it's just wonderful to be the youngest in the community. And I have actually been told by one of the sisters, I hope she won't mind by this, that um, I'm a spoiled brat. <laughs> and I admit that it is true, <laughs> they do spoil me. <laughs> How do they spoil you? Oh, I get what I want. <laughs> Such as? Such as sleeping in. <laughs> but there are some rules that can never be broken. Most of your day is spent in silence. Is that difficult for you? No, it's not difficult. It helps. It, I find it, it helps my life. Uh, Do you equate the silence with loneliness? I don't feel it is loneliness. It's amazing how many people look at it as lonely, but as I, I don't find it, uh, I don't have enough time of it. <laughs> but it's not all silence. For two one-hour periods each day, the nuns are allowed to talk to each other and let loose. Oh, there's a lot of letting loose. <laughs> yes, and there needs to be some. What kinds of things get discussed at this time? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Like the, 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 whatever happens during the day or up to that time or we get letters or something oh, sometimes it's just just a life something is something in our garden that's of interest and we bring it in something it is all sorts of there's no end of topics well, are there times when you're all kind of talking trying to talk together oh, yes. <laughs> I think sometimes you um, you can be sort of anxious to get some piece of news in that they have, and, uh, and, and, and then it, it does help us to remember that somebody else probably is in the same boat. And uh, so we have to sort of, uh, you know, just sort of uh, wait for the green light. When you get to one eye, put something in. There are no newspapers, no television or radio, but a surprising amount of information 
does filter through. Pictures printed on them. So if I could put a few names that are familiar to us to you, what does the name Danyan Loder mean to you? Who? Danyan Loder. Do you know who Danyan Loder is? Yeah. Is he one of the Olympic people? Olympic people, yes. Oh, yes. He was. He, yeah. he, won. He's won the, he won the gold medal. That's right. Oh, yes. He won two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that's right. Can I try you with um, Madonna? Yes, I know about her. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about her? Oh, well, I've heard quite a bit about her. <laughs> yeah, she's a, a singer. But still, a lot passes them by. What about Sean Fitzpatrick? Well, I don't know if, you, uh, if you're alluding to the Fitzpatrick who was the travel man. You know, he used to do these wonderful um, travel guides, uh, you know, in the, in the films. No? Not a singer. Do you support the All Blacks? Of course I do. <laughs> if I ever hear this a match, I'll pray for their victory. <laughs> <laughs> How much credit can you take for the All Blacks winning? Oh! Well, I mean, we leave that to the Lord, but we do our best, of course. <laughs> but for some, the world has become a total stranger. Sister Elizabeth entered the order at the end of World War II, 50 years ago. Well, yes, it doesn't seem that long. <laughs> it's gone so quickly, I just, uh, just can't believe it. I've been here all the time. Sister Elizabeth, like most of the nuns, very occasionally goes out for a doctor's appointment. Do you enjoy going out? No. <laughs> the last time I was out, it was such a long journey, and the, and the you know, the, the thing across your chest. It was the belt. To, yes, the belt. Mm -hmm. Security belt, yes. The cars are different, you know. I wouldn't know how to open it. <laughs> I saw the... Um, the uh, rubbish bins being lifted up into the, into the <laughs> emptied into the. <laughs> it's quite, quite uh, fascinating, you know, to see the, this great big iron arms come down and lift the thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, the sisters only get to hear about how the world is changing. News comes from family, permitted to make occasional visits. So you've been coming along to see her now, once a month. For 46 years, I think. <laughs> 46 years? Sister Rosemary and her sisters. How did you react when your younger sister decided to do this? Oh, yeah, I was pleased. Well, I was sad because I felt she was a qualified teacher and everything. I thought to myself, why, if she wants to give her life to God, why could she not, uh, you carry know, on. carry on teaching or uh, something like that, you in know? But then, after she entered and I could see how happy she was and how she had fitted in with the life here, I then couldn't wish her to be anywhere else. Wouldn't it be more use for you to be out in the community helping, teaching? That's very good and useful, and people are called to that. I was called away from it. Can you see how some people would see the life of a Carmelite nun as being a waste of time? Easily, easily, yes. Anybody who didn't understand what a faith would I quite, quite understand. They think this is absurd. They think it's a, a real waste of life. You could have had so many things that they would value. Well, it's, it's just so different for me because um, these other things, no matter how precious they are, you've got to let them all go in the end. But what if there is no God? It's just out of, the, out of my, out of absolutely impossible that I would think there's no God. Could you be happier in any other circumstance? Oh, I think I, I would always want this. I, would always, I, I really wouldn't be as at peace as I am now. And I think peace is probably what most people are looking for anyway.